my name's Rindy and welcome back to the Defense Saga. In this series, we're striving towards something that's never been done in the game of RuneScape, and that is a perfect Defense Pure Hardcore Iron Man build. And when I say this has never been done, that's because there's a lot of items in this build that require a lot of time and complex problem solving to overcome, and that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode and future episodes to come. I'm going to be completing quests that otherwise shouldn't be possible, I'm going to be doing a lot of unique things along with getting a lot of unique items that I otherwise should not have, including the end goal being that of the fire cape with one prayer, one attack, one strength, and once again as an Iron Man defense peer. So in the last episode of this series, I found out a unique way to get recoil rings which I will need for Jad and other quests and other NPCs I'll have to kill along the way to get the necessary items to eventually get that fire cape. I made quite a few of these recoils and I ended up completing Lost City with some of these as well as getting access to Piro Piro and then getting my hunter up to a significant level in order to catch both magpies and eclectic implings and therefore finally started my medium clue grind. Today we'll be continuing that medium clue grind to possibly get closer to our 43 strength bonus goal which includes spiked manacles, a strength enemy trimmed, and of course I will be needing some purple sweets for the long term end goal of a one per fire cape. But first, a very important announcement. Um, I actually just realized I'm a pescatarian so I can't actually eat those. Do you have any potato wedges and like the hottest sauce instead? Yeah! Cool, thank you. I think I just realized that this actually is chicken, so come here Nibbler. <sighs> Have you ever forgotten that you're a pescatarian on multiple occasions, just like myself? Well, fret no more. I've finally found the solution to this problem. I've recently gotten into HelloFresh, and they have options for everyone, even pescatarians like ourselves. There is 50 weekly options, including a rotating selection of items at the HelloFresh market, and there are plenty of delicious dishes to choose from, no matter the occasion. The most recent one I tried is the shrimp scampi, and boy, as a pescatarian, I found this dish to be one hell of a delight. HelloFresh was even cheaper than grocery shopping. Even at full price, its pre-portioned ingredients means I didn't waste excess money on excess food. So everything comes neatly packaged and is something to look forward to, even with my wife. We have a lot of fun cooking lately, which before honestly was somewhat of a burden. So keep things fresh with HelloFresh and never forget you're a pescatarian ever again. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGRINDYMAY16 for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. All right, so without further ado, let's continue the medium clue grind. Let's complete some quests along the way, find some greater navigation routes, and do a hell of a lot more in today's episode of the Defense Saga. I almost totally forgot I had a hard clue um, I have to talk to the mummy inside Sophonim, and I haven't started Ikrithan's little helper for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Luckily, I already have Gertrude's cat done and all the supplies for that. I'm not gonna finish that quest, obviously, right now, but I figured I might as well start it, see what this hard clue brings us next. So I started the quest, finished up this puzzle box here, and let's see what he gives me. Ooh, Zami Wizard, and it's in the wilderness. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. So right off the bat, I'm realizing that I should probably bring some better melee gear with me while doing these clues. I forget there's even like kill steps and medium clues. So uh, yeah, we're having to literally staff bash a barbarian right now with a Draymond staff because that's the best thing I had on me. It's working, but very slowly. And no matter what I use on this account, it's going to be very slow, but I could at least bring my torso and fighter hat and like a spear <laughs> to help speed this process up a bit all right let's see what this is ah luckily another step i can do another issue with doing clues on this account i thought i'd mention is the navigation i'm going to try and optimize my navigation as much as possible because i'm going to be doing so many of these things for instance right now the best way to get to the hobgoblins for this clue step is to walk all the way from the monastery teleport to the guy who charters you to remington for 30 coins and then walk north from the Remington area all the way to the Hobgoblin port. So the issue now is I have very unoptimized transportation. I don't have many quests done that could help me with transportation. I don't have high agility levels. All of that, it's going to really slow me down and slow down the process of doing these medium clues and I'm going to be here for a while. Okay, a bit more lucky this time. Three step the clue 
Addy Plate Body, Addy Pickaxe. I think that's a pickaxe upgrade, but more importantly, that Addy Plate Body will come in handy because one of the medium steps calls for full Addy to be equipped, and I can actually do that one since I am a defense peer. It's one of the few equipment clues I can do along with the earlier one you saw with the hard leather body. So here is another clue step I can, in fact, do, surprisingly. I guess I could do it if I was like halfway through Priest in Peril too, because he's in the same spot and he'd probably give you the same clue and whatnot. But this is a little bit scary. Hopefully he doesn't just like slap me somehow with Pair XP. Another medium clue. We're all good. All right, a third casket. This is about four steps for this one. It looks like we got some purple sweets, some Ireworth teleports, which I'll never be able to use because I can't do underground pass. It requires range. It gives attack XP. I got a U combo too, which is the same likelihood as that strength Amy trimmed I really need. I hope I get that one soon. It's not that high of a likelihood. So for this medium clue step, I did have to start waterfall and bring a rope, but fortunately I do not have to finish waterfall quest or else that would give me 30 attack and strength, which is not optimal on a defense pier. So I'm just going to use this rope, go over to that island, and dig up that clue spot. I'm probably going to go through this clue step many times. So any extra clue step I can do, and I find out I can do, is a huge benefit here. And we got a casket off that one, actually. I was not expecting that. I was three steps in. So ruins Ru ruins all right so temporarily i'm taking a break from medium clues i got super bored of just running the medium clue routes already i know i've only opened like four of them i think but uh bear with me i need some run energy i need some better agility maybe even some graceful so over the next few days i think i'm going to be doing some agility as well as these clues hopefully grab some graceful to speed up the process of things a little bit and just optimize everything out all right so i got a whopping 30 agility i think before i got bored but here we are now now we're completing the Enter the Abyss mini quest and I'm doing this for a few extra total levels. I got nine runecrafting off that as well though. Back to the goal from last episode. We're going to get some early herb lore XP and I'm going to be doing the Verok Diary and it requires the Enter the Abyss mini quest I believe and dig site which I already have done from last episode. I'm now doing my favorite task here, cleaning finds. Just kidding. I'm not going to be here forever like a lot of people are. I'm just doing this for the kudos for the easy diary. Don't worry. The rest of the entirety of the series is not going to be me just cleaning finds. Instead, it's going to be me doing medium clues. Enjoy. All right, here's where Enter the Abyss came in handy because I do not have an Earth Talisman. This is very scary, actually. I don't know. I've heard these things can, like, hit, like, a truck on you. Okay, to complete the Varrock Easy Diary, there we go. We've crafted our Earth Ruin without an Earth Talisman. Wow. So let's go collect our reward and move on to some other diaries. All right, I'm doing the Candor and Easy Diary right now, and I'm supposed to be killing all of these elementals. The only one I've ever had trouble with in the past is these Earth Elementals right here that I'm killing now, and... I did not know this before, you've seen this actually in the, my first or second episode where I had to get an alt to wake this thing up and then kick it to death with an LMS boost because I thought it was immune to venom. Well most of these are immune to venom and poison, except there's some of these in the back here that never actually wake up from their slumber so they never have the text over their head and therefore you can actually poison them so I just killed that with a spear easy as one, two, three, and now moving on to the next step of the Candron Diary. All right, so once again, we're doing this all for herb lore, but this should be the last step of the Candron Diary, and I should be able to get a couple more lamps now from that easy diary being 5k herb lore XP. Forgot I have no talismans on this account, so I'm having to go through the abyss yet again, I had to run through the wilderness, and now I have to run through all these things that can unlikely max on me and kill me all right so we got the water ruin crafting done without the water talisman and now we just completed finally the lumbridge drain or diaries so that's some more xp lamps some more xp i'll be putting into herb lore since i now have over 30. i've been sitting here killing men what seems like forever i think i've killed like 50 men over the last 45 minutes trying to get a grimy herb drop and oh my there it is Grimy Taroman. Uh, that's not even the most common drop. I was thinking I was going to get a Grimy Guam from these things, but I'm way over kill count even for that. Anyways, I need a Grimy Herb for the woman to clean the herb in Narda for a diary step for the Desert Diary, which I need to do for obviously more XP lamps. And no, I did not have any Grimy Herbs in my bank for some fucking weird reason. I think it's because most of my herbs I've been getting from Sorcerer's Garden, and they're already clean there, and I'm about to die. This is another hard part. I probably should have brought more food here i'm redropping the potato cactus to make it go by a little bit quicker but this is multi-combat these are pretty high level npcs i did bring an anti-poison so i won't be dying to poison today but i gotta get out of here as fast as possible there we go finishing up another desert diary step here and i'm realizing 
I don't even think I can complete the Desert Diary unless I want Strength XP. I have to open a sarcophagus inside the Pyramid Plunder minigame, and that literally gives me Strength XP, so I'm going to have to abandon this diary. And once again, if you missed it from last episode, the whole reason we're getting Herblore up is so I can make Weapon Poison++ plus plus at 72 plus 5, I believe, with a stew boost. And that's going to be so I can obviously poison things in the fight caves and use a Bone Dagger P++ plus plus with my best in slot shield to give a little bit more strength bonus than I'm getting currently from a KP Iron Spear. So I'm constantly still on the agility grind i have finally gotten some graceful here i'm missing the boots and the cloak still but guess what we're gonna go get the scuffed boots aka the boots of lightness real quick to get some more weight reduction until i get this full set so yes now we're in our half graceful i was about to say full graceful moving around the map doing some clues still doing some diaries it's helping quite a bit i can tell but right now i'm mining some gold or if i can ever fucking mine it that is I already have the 40 mining requirement luckily, but this is for the Karamja Easy Diary. I have been poking this Joger forever, I even debated getting the LMS boost to do this, but um, yeah, I think we can do it without it, it just is going to take a lot more patience. Okay, so yes, we did get this poisoned. It's almost dead finally. Just kind of face tanked a lot of its hits to speed this up a bit. This is a Karamja Easy Diary stuff to kill the Joker, and I'm gonna actually take these bones here and these trading sticks. I don't know who, who knows? We might need trading sticks one day, but the bones are gonna be for the completion of Twibo and a Trio quest when I get that done in the future. All right, that is the easy Karamja Diary completed. Now I'm going to switch it up a bit. I'm already 35 herb lore from diaries and other things, so I'm actually going to use this small 1k XP lamp reward on Slayer because I'm only like 9 Slayer, and you can use the Karamja Diary actually on any level. It does not have to be over 30 like the other diaries. If you've ever been on like a weird pier or an obby mauler, you know, for the lamp grind, you do achievement diaries, and then you do one small favor, and that means I'm going to have to do Shiloh Village, which is required for one small favor. And I can't catch that magpie because I have no jar on me. Anyways, I'm going to be doing this quest. There are a couple bosses that are going to be a little bit difficult to overcome. Alright, so I don't want to have to waste my precious recoils if I don't have to. I think I can kill Nazistrul and not use as many recoils if in fact I just sit here with my KP bronze spear and face tank him with this small 17 over 1 LMS boost. Now I showed this boost in my last episode. Once again, this is something that's been used forever. I use it all the time for many quests. It gives only a boost if you're under level 17 in the skill like I'm level 1. So it's going to be 17 over 1. If you were level 12, it would be still 17 over 12, etc. But I'm taking this boost all the way to Nazistrul. And we're going to try and fight him and see if we can take him down. Okay, so I was hopping around 10 seconds at a time to keep the boost. I did lose some of it, obviously, because there's a lot of aggressive NPCs that make it to where I can't hop worlds. But here we are finally with 15 over 1 boost left over. And yeah, I'm just going to try and face tank this thing with Karambwans and, and see if we can actually kill it fast enough. I don't know if it has a despawn timer or not, but I guess we're going to find out and hopefully poison him as soon as possible. We are on his third form now, and I am 7 over 1 stats, so this has taken a bit of time. Like I said, I'm not sure if this thing has a despawn timer, so that's why I'm just literally sitting here and stabbing it rather than waiting for the poison to kill it. Third and final form, let's do this. Okay, it's taken forever. This third form is actually really, really slow to kill. It's got the most HP of them all, obviously. I think I only need like two more poisons. There's the first one. No. What? Did I complete it? Maybe if I edge search this, it'll give me the corpse or something. It looked like he might have died. Okay, he didn't die. Yep, he's full health. And we have now three over one stats. Okay, we're back with a boost. This time 16 over 1. Had to log out 10 seconds at a time. Run all the way back here from LMS. It was not fun. But the good thing is this time I think I'm only going to have to kill this thing in its third and final form. I'm going to stab your ass, bitch. Okay, most NPCs despawn timers are 5 minutes, so as long as the poison hits this Okay, we're good. Um, last time it was 11 minutes, but I think that's because it was on its third form, so I think that's why it was actually over 5 minutes in the third form. 11 minutes total, I don't know, what, whatever. It worked, we got our fucking thing. Let's go complete Shiloh Village and then start my favorite quest, One Small Favor. 
Okay, one small favor. Now you think this quest would be pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of mini boss fights in this quest, like the last one, Slagolith and Dwarves being some. Okay, another cool unlock kind of that just comes along with this quest is the ability to make Guthix rest. And this is actually really good because it's the best over HP boosting food you could say I can use currently because there's no way I'm really getting brews right now. So I do have the herbs already for this because I was doing Sorcerer's Garden, it gave me all the clean herbs I needed to do this quest and I had a lot of them banked so there we go Guthix rest and now we have the ability to permanently make these all right so you know how I mentioned earlier NPCs usually have like a five minute despawn timer in these weird quests well this is one of them Slagolith only appears for five minutes and I've already got the LMS boost you can see there in the top left but I've got to kill this thing as fast as possible the problem is I can't even hit on this thing because it's got massive defense it's got negating max hits so even when I hit a one it's gonna be like a zero when I hit a two it's gonna be a one it, it halves my hits because it's not a pickaxe it's a really weird NPC anyways the goal is going to be this going to have to try and actually poison this thing within the first minute and a half of me being logged in or else the poison isn't going to take down fast enough to kill it so i got to make sure i actually do this right So we weren't able to poison the Slagle at this time, we've lost some of our boost and we're going to have to relog or else this thing is going to just despawn mid fight even if I get a poison off at say 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 4 minutes. I've only got 5 minutes to kill this thing and poison is very slow. So attempt number 2, still not having much luck here, 25 seconds in, haven't even hit this thing yet but we only have a few attempts per run and then I'm going to have to go get my LMS boost yet again and then log out every 10 seconds to retain the boost and come all the way back here to Slagolith from like an arty cloak teleport. So this might take a while and it's not going to be fun unless I can just get a lucky poison off as soon as possible. All right, so this is attempt number, I don't even know what attempt number it is. I've lost count, but we're gonna have to leave unless we just get some lucky hit off here. I'm kind of risking it. I think I could take one more hit and then I'm gonna, yeah, definitely gonna teleport out. Holy shit, that's scary. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back to LMS now and get a boost yet again like I was talking about, then hop 10 seconds at a time, come all the way back and attempt this yet again. Like I said, one small favor, it's typically an annoying quest, yes, but uh, not this annoying, unless you're some stupid build snowflake defense peer like myself. Back yet again, failed yet again. This is like another four failures, or maybe three. I don't know, I lost count again. Um, but yeah, let's hop and hopefully we can get this. This time, our boost is going down, so the likelihood of us not failing is going down as well, or succeeding, I should say. There we go, I just got a hit, so hopefully that'll poison. I've gotten a lot, oh my god, it worked. Yes, I was saying, I've gotten a lot of hits that didn't poison. Let's do this. All right, here we go, this should be the final poison. And he is dead, finally. That took well over an hour just to kill this mini boss from this quest. I'm gonna get that free ruby and diamond. As well, I decided to hit it that whole time just to make sure it died before the five minute mark. It was like around four minutes 10, I think, when it died, so we're in the clear and we can move on. So I also have to kill three of these dwarves for this quest and they don't look that bad, but they're like level 50 and they've got a lot of defense for some reason. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes. I can barely hit on this thing and when I do, it almost never poisons it, but uh, I might get lucky sooner or later.
Yeah, that only took like 30 minutes. I only have to do that two more times. Whippy. Hopefully I don't have to bank again and get some more food. I realized I'm just gonna get out of here and go to LMS and get the boost again just to kill these dwarves because it's probably gonna be faster to do that honestly even having to log out every 10 seconds and transport myself all the way over here than trying to hit that thing normally. So I was not wrong. I came back here with a boost and we're barely at 14 over one and we've already killed two of them. The other two that I needed to kill and I don't know why I attacked the other one. But uh, yeah, we've done the dwarf portion of one small favor quest, the other two thirds of it in two minutes versus 30 minutes. So this is looking good. So we're finally completing this quest. I just wanted to see what happened when I clicked off there. Um, nothing, fortunately. <clears throat> don't ban me, please. But yeah, we, we just did this quest for one, to be a completionist defense peer Iron Man, and for two, obviously for these lamps here. These are two 10K reward XP lamps, and these are going to get us from 35, I believe, to 41 Herblore. So I'm really looking forward to using these here right now for 41 Herblore, and then I'm going to be training Herblore eventually with real herbs and no XP lamps, as we've kind of completed the XP lamp goal um, for the most part. Now, why did I say earlier for the most part? Well, you might not have seen me do the Faldor Diary yet, and that's because, uh, it's Christmas time, by the way. I don't know when this is being shown, but it's Christmas time. Merry Christmas. And I can't kill this duck. I can't reach it. It's frozen in the lake in Faldor. I cannot make this up. The update for the Christmas Faldor, whatever you want to call it, has frozen the duck I need to actually kill for the diary in place, and I cannot reach it unless I have a halberd or, like, a ranged weapon. Obviously, I don't want to get ranged XP. I could get, a uh, 7 the agility real quick and then get a bronze halberd from some crazy drop in the wilderness god wars dungeon from uh uh gorak i think it is the other option would be to spend like 800k on a cannon and spawn kill this duck after my alt account kills it or something and then get all the other ducks away and all the other farmers and npcs i could possibly with a cannon away from this duck to spawn kill it and hope to god that i don't get range xp on my precious defense peer with only two range xp right now there's those two options or there's yeah the third option just uh wait till the christmas event's over in a couple of weeks until this damn godforsaken lake is unfrozen and I could just kill the duck normally with melee like anyone else who was doing the diary before Christmas could do anyways. And yes, I've tried the other ducks around Faldor. They're all frozen in place no matter what stream, lake, whatever, and their spawn point is literally where they're frozen. So even if I were to kill them, they're not gonna move. They're just gonna spawn back in their frozen state of being. Fuck Christmas, am I right? I mean, I love Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. So here we are, Goblin Diplomacy Quest. One of the hardest, most difficult quests to ever complete. Why is Randy doing this right now? Getting Recipe for Disaster gloves. I'm going to have to do Goblin Diplomacy to do the Goblin Diplomacy portion of Recipe for Disaster. And I'm going to be wanting the best Recipe for Disaster gloves I can get on this type of account build because boohoo, unfortunately, we do not have a region bracelet anymore or smuggled Barrows gloves from LMS. We're just actually going to have to play this game legit like I've said many times now and do recipe for disaster for guess what the best glove I can wear being black gloves no I can't even get myth gloves because I cannot do chompy bird hunting that gives me ranged xp that requires ranged also I can't even do nature spirit for the lumberage guide part because he also requires restless ghosts also nature spirit you have to kill gas and the gas give you two prayer because each one you kill gives 30 prayer xp so no I can't do that either I am literally stuck to black gloves and black gloves gloves is what it's going to be. I think they are five strength bonus, so one less than a combat bracelet. It's not the worst, it's not the best, but that's going to be my best in slot for this account, strength bonus for the gloves. And we're going to be shooting for that today as well. So I've already done Cook's Assistant, I've already done the starter portion for Recipe for Disaster where you just hand in the items. You've also already seen me do the Shadow of the Storm Evil Dave portion because I do have spices in case I can ever craft and enchant that fury which is highly doubtful. But I do have those three parts already completed, so now I'm just going to have to do the Goblin today, I'm going to do the Dwarf, and then I'm going to do the Pirate. The Goblin is the easiest of these right here because I'm just going to hand him in these items and he's going to make me this disgusting slop. After this is done, I'll head on over and do the Pirate Pete portion of RFD. Okay, so here we now have bronze gloves, I believe. I got a thousand farming XP as well, which is good because I will need that down the road for some herb farming and just some other miscellaneous things, possibly for the Tithe Farm minigame teleport. But let's head on over and complete Pirate's Pete, which is a little bit more complicated because I have to kill a few NPCs. So like all of you know, I'm one attack, one strength. Killing all these NPCs and all these quests has proven to be a very big annoyance. And I'm already finding that to be true once again, as... These mud skippers, they're not dying. I, I can't hit them. When I do hit them, they don't get poisoned. So guess what I'm gonna do? 
<laughs> we're gonna go to last man standing and get a boost come back here 10 seconds at a time to kill these filthy little mud skippers and get five of their hides my recoils don't work that well either here because well i have 70 defense and i don't get hit a lot so lms boost thank you again for coming in clutch all right i've made it back with a 16 over one boost we've already killed three mud skippers and gotten three hides in three minutes versus like the 15 minutes i was trying to kill a singular one earlier the 17 stats they sound so ridiculous and so bad still but compared to one stats 17 stats even 13 stats now completely obliterate what i was doing before all right, we need five hides to get to the next part of this subquest, and there we go. This is the fifth one. I'm gonna eat a Karambon for that. And now I do still have a boost, 11 over one, so that only took like five minutes or less. And I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the crabs if I can take my gear off and kill some of those with the remaining boost because I do need as much crab meat as I possibly can get because you can burn the crab cake. So I'm gonna kill as many of those as I can while the boost is still up here for the next 11 minutes or so. I forgot to mention I did decide to bring Rings of Recoil just to make this as fast as possible. I have hundreds now in the bank to spare. So really I'm only gonna be using one throughout this entire process. And I'm almost, I believe about to get four crab meats. So in case I somehow burned three, we're still gonna be in the clear. As well, I got this crab shell. So I can maybe make like a cool crab claw or helmet out of this. All right, I always love this part when building a new account. You get to see how lucky you are with this crab cake here. And of course, I didn't even need the other three that I killed for the last 20 minutes. But hey, now we've got some extra crab cakes and Pirate Pete's still happy. There's another subquest completed. I think the last one I have to do now is just the dwarf, which should be pretty easy. All right, here we have Rohawk, Rohack, whatever you want to call him, making our dwarven rock cake that we're going to turn in to get our final piece of RFD gloves, the black gloves. That's going to be our best in slot forever for strength bonus. It's going to help us get the 43 that we need. So I'm going to let this cool and then I'm going to turn it in. Another thing I forgot to mention when I was fishing cod for Pirate Pete's portion to make the crab cake, I, I fished a few extra and that was for fish pies. And I just went to the potato patch to add some potatoes and put these fish pies together. Now why I need these fish pies is I can boost 62 to 65 fishing and I need 65 fishing to continue in to Twiboyana Trio Quest, which I never finished which is why I have a bronze KP spear. And I'll finally get to make another KP now that I can fish Karam ones at 65 boosted fishing. And I can upgrade to the iron KP spear eventually, which has a lot higher strength bonus and more accuracy. All right, so I'm back on the Ampling grind here. I'm kind of doing this like a UIM. I'm just dropping the useless unnoted items. I might eventually get a bunch of jars and collect some of these so I can collect maybe uh, curry leaves, gold ores, snape grass even for future herbal training. But for right now, we're just dropping a lot of stuff until I get a medium clue and some more filled jars and then I'm going on and completing the medium clues one step at a time. So as I showed you earlier, there are some medium steps where I have to kill some NPCs to get keys to open chests. And basically what I do is just wear my best offensive gear like I am now and just stab whatever NPC to near death. The only NPCs I've had kind of a struggle killing sometimes are the guard dogs, which I guess I could waste some attack potions I have in the bank for those. But uh, this is going by pretty quickly, not terribly. I can do about half the clues I'm getting. I would say literally half, like 50% of them I can complete. So it's not the worst thing in the world i'm still getting some medium clue rewards and we're gonna hop into those really quickly here in a second so that guard actually did give me a casket it looks like not another clue and we got another addy plate body which is useful for that full addy step I'm hopefully gonna be able to do later on. Okay, I know I'm supposed to be doing clues. I've already got sidetracked again though, and I had some thieving levels gained, and now we're doing the feud quest. So this is another quest that should not be possible without recoils. I've talked to many other Ironman defense peers who've never been able to complete this quest without them. They've tried everything. When I say they've tried everything, they've tried what I'm doing now even with the LMS boost that a lot of people do use, and they just can't get the NPCs down quick enough, and these NPCs are instanced NPCs so only you can attack them. Your main can't help you whatsoever. These NPCs have high defense as well, which does not help. They HP regenerate relatively quickly. And the worst part, they despawn in five minutes like many other quest NPCs. So it's literally impossible to kill these things fast enough without the recoils on an account like a level three skiller or even an account like an Iron Man defense pair like myself. That's why we're going to be doing this quest today. I'm going to try and complete the impossible yet again through the use of recoils and get the feud done on this very unique account, as well as continue on with my completionist goals of every quest I can possibly do. 
If you haven't noticed, I'm using table mechanics as well. Anything you put on a table in RuneScape does not despawn for 10 minutes. A lot of UIMs use this trick. So there's actually a banknote uncertifier down a little bit north inside of this city. So I used that in order to bring several cakes and stews and just throw them on the table there. I did about two or three inventories of these, so I won't run out of food either, and I'll be able to just pick them up off the table at any time while killing this guy as he does take more than one inventory of food typically to recoil down his entire HP. So let's go ahead and do that now, finish him off, and get this quest completed and over with. So hilariously enough, I've learned this from past mistakes. Don't kick this guy when he's about to die, he'll despawn. Just let the recoil kill him like that, and you're good. For some reason, I've kicked him in the past, and he's just disappeared on 1 HP. So I never want to kick him when he's almost down. I forgot to mention, that thug wasn't the only guy we had to fight. We have to fight this bandit now. This one is extremely similar, though. He's got a 5-minute despawn timer. He hits a little bit higher, though, so you can actually recoil a 2 instead of a 1 on him. He's a little bit quicker to kill with recoils, but you do need recoils once again, which makes this quest otherwise impossible. There's another 2 recoil from me and when i get low food i can just run over real quick use my noted food on the guy right next to me for the notes and grab a little bit more cakes by pressing the number three unnote all for like a 100 gp conversion rate so that's what i've been doing here and this bandit guy is bandit champion sorry i he's a champion not a guy there's another recoil. That's what I've been doing, and he's going to go down. He's going to die, and we're going to complete the feud quest on an account that shouldn't even be able to do this quest originally. Something very unique for this account build, and something just cool to have in the quest journal. So I've spent some of my hard-earned last man standing running and hiding coin that I've earned on some of these uh, plant packs. I wanted to get farming up a bit more as a base as well. I just wanted to get the, I think it's 16 construction requirement for the Falador Diary 1. Whenever I can do that, whenever the ducks unfreeze from the pond later on. So I decided I'd kill two birds with one stone. And yeah, I was going to get farming and construction up at the same time here by just putting these bag plants in and using the guy who unnotes stuff in Remington. So that's exactly what I'm doing to get my base construction levels up without really needing any planks. If you guys haven't seen the last three episodes, well, you're missing out, of course. But other than that, I can get into Mortania with one prayer on this beautiful Defense Pier build. That was one of my completionist goals for this Defense Pier Iron Man, you could say. So I can do this Mortania clue step as well as some others. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I had to run all the way from the Chronicle spot to Drezzel to get through to Mortania here. So it's not the best transport, but here we go. Luckily, I do have this track unlocked as well, which was done through Lost City, which could have only been done through recoils practically. So even though I didn't need Lost City for Piro Piro like I thought I did originally, I did need it for another medium clue step being that fairy music track unlock. So I've got a lot of cool unlocks in this account and they correlate back to these medium clue steps so we just have to play cecilia our lost city soundtrack and now we can't actually complete the next step so no matter how many kind of cool clue steps i can do there's always going to be these ones here that throttle me and that's what i was saying earlier i can only do about 50 percent of these clues i can't wield a steel longsword i can't wield mystic i don't have those requirements i'm a defense peer uh another one i cannot do so just another example i can't wield green dehyde chaps i can't get 40 range i'm one range because i'm a defense peer let's carry on shall we all right after several more failures here's the casket oh we got a unique a black headband the same rarity as manacles of course but so is pretty much every other unique from a medium clue so that's not saying much let's put this thing on shall we all right that looks pretty cool i kind of look like vanica or something all right my adhd was killing me don't make fun of me i know we've done barely any medium clues but i had to go do some agility and i decided to get some more marks of grace we've now got the full set of graceful and eventually we'll have enough soon here for a recolor of graceful as well because i hate the cream off-white color of normal graceful i need my fashion escape to be on point i've come across another problem here i don't have this soundtrack and guess what unlocks it rat pits quest already rat pits I fucking hate this quest line. I'm gonna have to do Ikwithin's Little Helper. Yet another quest that's not possible 
without recoils. So it's a good thing we have hundreds of them, am I right? So a little bit of a boost always helps out in saving some of these recoils. So that's why I'm once again here at LMS and you'll see why. So here we are, I've transported the LMS boost all the way to Icklethan's little helper inside the pyramid to the first boss inside of this quest. There's two. This one's typically a little bit easier depending on which one you get here, but I've never seen anyone do this um, without actually recoils before. I've never seen anyone be able to kill this thing with just the boost and one stats because it does have quite a bit of defense and once again a five minute despawn timer. These quest NPCs like to despawn after five minutes for some reason, which is what makes this the worst thing possible. But luckily right here, actually, we got extremely lucky. We got the monkey. The monkey mages you. The other one's melee you I believe it's good we got this fucking monkey because that means he's going to hit more on us because we're one magic we're a defense peer we have negative magic defense bonus on and our recoils are gonna be firing back off at this guy as fast as possible and therefore you know we're gonna actually probably be able to get this guy down first attempt in under five minutes before he despawns Okay, luckily, it looks like we're definitely going to be able to kill this guy. It's barely going to hit probably four minutes, if even five. And that's once again just because this guy has maged me. If not, I would have to find a way to somehow lower my defense um, to come in here and recoil it probably really fast enough to kill it. So I'm glad we got that out of the way and we got super lucky on that. Let's go ahead and head on into the next boss of the quest. So fucking annoying, that guy says. Yes, it is, because you're probably not going to fight anyone because I'm hopping worlds. By the way, this is over the course of several days, all of this footage. I'm only doing like three forfeits a day as LMS allows. So I'm not I'm not pissing too many people off, hopefully. All right, I brought my LMS boost to kill the last boss in this quest, the Possessed Priest. This guy gives me nightmares. I've had some bad experiences with him in the past. So let's see if we can do this. Okay, you might be looking at my login timer and saying like, oh, he's over five minutes. I don't know when I actually started attacking this guy, so it's freaking me out because he's 2 HP. I think the quest dialogue took like a minute maybe to get through. He's literally like at, at 2 HP, just, oh my god, he's still alive, he's got 1 HP. Die. Die. No. No. <laughs> Are you, di I can't continue the quest dialogue. I, I literally think it, it didn't continue. He's, he didn't die. Yep, he's there. He's respawned. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, that's why this quest gives me nightmares. I, I remember having to do this on a Lower the Better episode, and it took me like 10 attempts just to kill this fucking NPC, and I have a feeling it's gonna happen again. And now we're gonna have to go all the way back to Last Man Standing, log out 10 seconds at a time, come all the way back here. Why am I not doing medium- why am I doing this and not doing medium clues? Oh yeah, because the medium clue led me to this quest. That's right. I actually have to do this right now. So here we go. Let's go back. By the way, uh, we made it back. We have the boost again. Um, you might also think I'm actually like the stupidest person ever because you're like, well, why isn't this guy poisoning him with his KP spear? He could probably kill him like 10 times faster. And why didn't he poison the last guy? Well, I forgot to mention, these guys are immune to poison because once again, they're one of those NPCs that has text over their head that resets the poison timer. So you, you can't actually poison this guy. I've got to out DPS him. I'm switching down to event RPG once my boost goes a little bit lower, but hopefully this is the time. Uh, it probably won't be because this this boss is cursed, literally. It's, it's a possessed priest. What do you expect? And by the way, yes, this is why this quest requires recoils, literally. I'm so glad I have recoils on this account. You don't even know. Is this it? I don't know because uh, I've been here like five other times. It is. We actually did it. Thank God. You don't even know. This, I've gotten him down to like one HP four other times with the boost. I even tried it without the boost a few times. I got it close as well then. The boost didn't matter as much. It, it just matters at as many times as he hits on me. That's all that matters. It's an RNG fest. I probably could have lowered my defense somehow, but I'm too lazy to figure out how to do that right now. We got it done finally though. It took over an hour of just hopping to LMS, sometimes not, just experimenting around. 
but we also get to do this cool little manip right here that I bet you all have seen before and I probably showed you a hundred times before but it's like my favorite thing ever look at this I'm literally dancing like I'm climbing up the stairs ha 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 don't ban me please oh my god okay let's actually complete the cutscene legitimately this time and just finish this quest off and there we go before I complete this quest, I just wanted to say again, just like last episode where Dragon Slayer completion and Eagle's Peak completion was like a good boy Randy pat on the back thing, it stopped me from doing bug abuse in the future, so is the action of completing this quest. It's gonna stop a lot of my temptations of my past self by completing this quest legitimately. Because this is one of the quests if I was my prior self, I would have never completed in hopes of something else working in the future. Now they've patched repeated quests through the previous shown method, but this is one of those quests that would be possibly repeatable that I could have repeated multiple times when the repeated quest XP rewards were working and possibly that I could do in the future but now I'm not going to be able to because I'm putting it in this video and everyone knows about it and they're going to fix it hopefully. Please fix this. But yeah, as you could see there was a one tick clearance there. I was able to pull up an interface and click off the dialogue there was a tick clearance between the ending dialogue and the ending completion of the quest. A little bit different there. It wasn't a click off of the last dialogue. It was a click off of the last dialogue into a one tick clearance into another dialogue into the completion so if i was say in the future found a way to wrap quest again i could have wrapped this one and gotten 99 thieving agility and woodcutting in a matter of like two hours of wrapping quest but unfortunately i won't be able to do that on this i mean fortunately i won't be able to do that on this account and i will not be tempted to ever in the future because the quest is already done and now i cannot complete this quest again and possibly get 99 and three skills in a matter of two hours for a third time why did we even do that quest again oh yeah because rat catchers it's required for rat catchers quest line and we need that uh, soundtrack inside uh what is it port serum rat pits or varrock arty rat pits wherever the fuck it is and we need to do rat catchers quests anyways it's a completion of school of mine so let's do it there you go Cecilia. I hope you enjoyed that soundtrack. I took a lot of ass whooping to get that to you But thank you as well for the next clue It looks like we can do this one for once after a song step So that's great as well if you haven't noticed top left corner We're starting a tale of two cats quest, but not to complete it We're doing it for a little bit better navigation and I'll explain that later But it also required Ickleton's little helper which I just completed So it's another two birds with one stone task and we're gonna get a lot done just by completing that Ickleton's little helper Which wouldn't have been possible even without the recoils once again so I'm headed to the Sphinx in Sofanim for A Tale of Two Cats, and I might as well talk to this guy here for the Snake Charm thing for a Rat Catcher quest as well and to complete that quest. So in the desert, I'm getting two tasks done at once, both with the same quest requirements. Alright, so I've got the Snake Charm now and I'm talking to the Sphinx now for A Tale of Two Cats quest. So I'm going to return to Port Serum, finish Rat Catcher's quest, and then continue on with A Tale of Two Cats quest. Man, I get those two confused. I'm surprised I said that correctly. And yeah, two cats with one stone. I played the rats the song with the snake charmer thing and now we've got our thieving XP a couple more quest points and the rat pits unlock along with uh, what quest was that it was rat catchers not a, not a tale of two cats rat catchers quest completed I had another clue to do before I wanted to get up to the step of the a tale of two cats quest and Dragonstone jewelry. I think that's almost as rare as a strength enemy trimmed and I actually can't use that because you do need hero's quest done to use that Unfortunately that gives attack and defense XP dragon slayer gives strength XP So I'm never gonna ever 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 be able to use that dragonstone jewelry charge I'm only going to be able to get uncharged glories from dragon implants not charged ones So therefore I can never really make an advanced jewelry box but I should be able to still mount an uncharged glory on the wall eventually for my home because that does not require any charges Fortunately and weirdly enough. I've decided to get some more hunter up along my clue routes right now I'm seeing ninja implants magpie implants. Sometimes I don't have nets for these things I even see dragon implants I wish I could catch because I'm running walking pretty much everywhere I go because my transportation is so limited right now I have almost no teleports So I see a lot of implants I can't catch right now and I need to get my hunter up as well I want to get my hunter up for that dragon implant and that glory uncharged I was mentioning the mount on the wall and there's an even much longer term goal I'll mention in the future involving about 7,000 lucky implings uh, but we'll talk about that later don't worry about that now that that's just that's just a little bit concerning but that's gonna be like the last thing I ever do on this account so uh, we'll save that whole discussion for another day because that's gonna take me like an hour to explain to you what the hell I'm doing with that so yeah let's continue catching some more lizards getting some hunter up hopefully getting to dragon, maybe even lucky implings in the next few coming weeks this is step five and we're back at the spot I got my first medium clue let's see what this should be absolute garbage okay okay my inventory is full 
and I've got a Berthorpe step clue. This is exactly what I wanted to show you this whole navigation idea I had with A Tale of Two Cats quest. I've gotten A Tale of Two Cats up to the part I wanted to, which is pretty much the last step of the quest. And I'm going to show you why this is important for navigation, as I mentioned earlier, but didn't really go into. So I'm going to Chronicle Teleport. From here, I'm going to go west over to the Agility Obstacle, which I have the Agility level to navigate through. Then I'm going to go south all the way around Drainer Manor. This is because Bob, the cat from the quest, is commonly seen wandering around RuneScape, but often he gets stuck on the north side of Draenor Manor, and pretty much out of one of every five worlds, he's going to be there. So I write down on a notepad or on the notes on the side of Runelight exactly what world this guy is in, and I just hop to it once I get around there to the back of the Draenor Manor. Now you might be thinking to yourself, since I used that crazy wacky method of getting enchanted recoils and enchanted games necklaces with only one magic last episode, why don't I just use the games necklaces to get to Birth Orb fast? Well, I'm trying to save those basically for more important tasks like lucky implings and, and whatnot and maybe making a basic jewelry box. But here, I'm going into the final cutscene of A Tale of Two Cats because Bob is here, he resides in this world at the back of Drainer Manor pretty much till the next update and then he respawns and eventually hopefully wanders back to the Drainer Manor area. Once I get to the actual dialogue with the click here to continue part of this last cutscene, I'm just going to basically click off of it. And this has like kind of a return teleport out of the cutscene back to Berthorpe. So as you can see here, I'm going to click off this and it fades out. And instead of returning where I talked to the cat, because the cat's such a wandering NPC, it doesn't know where to take me. Instead, it just defaults me back to Berthorpe. And here we are. We're in Berthorpe, and we didn't have to run all the way from the Chronicle Teleport or all the way around White Wolf Mountain from the RD Cloak Teleport, and this is a much quicker route as well. We're not wasting our precious games necklaces along the way, and we can simply dig at this clue scroll spot, and voila, we've completed a Berthorpe step while saving a little bit of time and doing some really unique, weird navigation along the way. Navigation like this is what I'm going to be hunting for all across this account to basically save myself time as I'll be doing, like I said, thousands of medium clues and I have access to almost no teleports because I am one magic and there are a lot of quest restrictions as well and quest items I cannot get which have teleport effects to them as well. All right, we've got yet another casket here. Okay, our second unique, Mithril Plate Legs Trimmed. We got a Sarah Page too, but more importantly, we got 12 Purple Sweets. That's really nice, because like I said, we're trying to collect like 10,000 Purple Sweets. So the more Purple Sweets, the better. And the other cool thing is I can wear a lot of the uniques out of these medium clues, like these Mithril Legs, because I am a Defense Peer. Another reason why I chose a Defense Peer, because they can wear some pretty fucking cool looking shit, to be honest. Like I said, I do need farming, not only for herbs and all of that, but eventually for this clue step, I need 45 farming to get inside the farming guild and I don't have that right now so eventually though I'm gonna be able to do this and we're gonna make our way all the way to the farming guild even though it's in Zaya and I hate that place and it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere uh, another day another casket looking for strength Amy. no okay we get mithril plate skirt trimmed uh, instead of mithril plate legs trimmed this time but we got more purple sweets too we're getting lucky on purple sweets it seems like I think People say purple sweets are usually like a one to one ratio per clue. So if you have like a thousand clues done, you get like a thousand purple sweets. But right now I think we're like at 50 purple sweets and nine clues. So 10 clues, sorry. Pretty good ratio. Still hoping to get super lucky and pull a strength ammy or some boots. Nope, nothing, nothing there. All right, we're at the bank with our 12th casket. Purple sweets, more purple sweets. I'll really take that one and some alcohols, which I'll sell to a shop later. Awesome. Just pulled casket number 14. And, oh my god, strength and me trimmed already? I only have 14 medium clues done. I only have 14 clues done. That's a 1 in 341 chance right there. And I've already got it with 14. I mean, I guess he had multiple rolls. But still, that doesn't add up. That's like, what, a 1 in 70 versus a 1 in 341? And we've already got it? I'll fucking take that. Now, I might get more of these because I still need manacles. And that's way rarer than a strength and me trimmed. That's our best in slot necklace for almost any instance right now. Now, glory will outclass it in, in other instances where I can't hit twos but for the long run for the fight caves that adds to our strength bonus it gives us plus 10 it's our best in slot amulet inside the fight caves for a final challenge and that's a huge upgrade so not that long ago we've already gotten our best in slot gloves and now we've got our best in slot amulet together that makes 15 strength bonus they might be the easiest things to come by yet probably forever but we got them we're, we're making progress here finally so as you can see, right now in fact, there's a lot of these medium clue steps that are in Mortania, Canifus, all over the area that I, one, can't really get to easily. That's because there's only three options right now for me to get into Mortania, and specifically Canifus where a lot of these clue steps are, which makes it really long and hard to get to. 
Like I said, navigation is going to be a key component of this episode, and that's why I need to find a better way into Canifis area. So right now, the options are take a Chronicle, go all the way through Varrock, through Eastern Varrock, through Drezel, all the way through that little area of the River Salve, and then go east towards Canifis. That takes forever. The second option is to use my minigame teleport or a teleport scroll from Clue Scrolls. I luckily can use this option because last episode, if you didn't watch it, I completed Shades of Morton Quest, which I otherwise should have not been able to do. Anyways, that puts me all the way near the Shades of Morton Quest start when using those teleports and that's even a longer run through the swamp and the winding trails in it, all the way to Canifis. There's one other option right now, which is going through Port Phasmatis through a charter ship, which is also a super long run and cost me around 3 to 4k every time I want to charter through that route. So why am I telling you all of these boring navigation routes into Canifis? Well, I need a better one if I'm going to be doing all of these medium clues over the long term. And I think I might have found one. Now, naturally, you actually have to do Nature Spirit to start in search of a Meyer Q quest. Hilariously enough, a lot of the Mortania quests have hard requirements when it comes to starting a new quest that has a quest lock behind it, ever since I've released many videos of me skipping quests around the Mortania area. But for some reason, as you can see here, I'm able to start the In Search of a Meyer Q quest without ever having completed Nature Spirit like it says I need to be having completed in the quest journal. All I need is the last part of the druid pouches from the nature spirit quest, which I can do. Now I can't fully complete the nature spirit quest because once again, killing the three gas for this quest gives two prayer from my one prayer. And I'm no way, shape or form able to do this. I've tried everything to know that prayer XP and it is not possible. And why am I actually trying to do in search of a Q quest or at least part of it? Well, I want to get access to the underground tunnel that goes straight into Canifis to where I can do all these medium clue steps there. So is it possible? Could I teleport to the Shades of Morton area with the minigam teleport or clue scroll teleport scroll and then run east to the boat, take the boat from the in search of a Meyer Q quest all the way north, then take the shortcut all the way underneath Canifis up until the bar so I can complete those medium clue steps all without the need of completing either one nature spirit or two in search of the Meyer Q quest because one, I can't do nature spirit like I said and two, I can't even complete in search of a Meyer Q quest as well because that gives attack and strength XP something I can't have as a defense peer. Well, I'm never going to know if I can run that route or use that shortcut unless we test it out, of course, and that's what I'm going to be doing next. All right, so I've mined some silver. I'm buying a sickle mold because I have to do nature spirit up until the part where I actually get the druid pouches because the quest uh, in search of a Myrku, however the fuck you say it, it requires five of these things. And somehow I was able to start it without actually having Nature Spirit done, so the only thing I can think of it's going to need is a partial completion with those pouches. Alright, so I actually already had the crafting and the smithing to get the Silver Sickle, and now we're at Philemon's Grotto, and we're talking to him, getting these Druidic spells here, but I'm gonna get multiple of these by dropping it and talking to him once again, repeating the same step of the quest, and that's because it's easier to get the food for the Druid pouches being the mushrooms using the spells if you have multiples of them early on, rather than using the Bloom spell from the Silver Sickle because the bloom spell is going to wipe your prayer. That's not going to be fun because you're going to have to keep prey potting, which I don't have, or go to an altar, which there's none near, or maybe a Jenger Berries, which I don't have any of currently. It's just a hassle. So I'm getting multiple of these druidic spells now so I can get multiple things to fill multiple druid pouches being the five I need for the In Search of the Mercu quest. So like I was saying, I can use these duplicates of the druidic spells here to put in those druid pouches I'll later get inside this quest, all without the use of prayer pots or any kind of prayer restoration because I'm not actually casting the bloom spell on the silver sickle. Therefore, by doing this, it just makes my life a lot easier. So Philemon just blessed my silver sickle. He gave me the druid pouch. Now, if I was doing the quest normally here, this is where I would go kill the gas, get prayer XP, and ruin my account and get two prayer, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to complete the quest. I just wanted the druid pouch so I could go ahead and fill it up with this fungus, but I've not been told how to use this item yet. It looks like I think I just have to go cast bloom, then, then it auto-completes and allows me to then add the mushrooms to this druid pouch. So I'm casting the bloom spell over here. Hopefully this allows me to start filling the druidic pouches because it should, and you need to for the quest anyway. So I'm going to pick this and then maybe I can continue to fill Okay, awesome. So we're, we're able to fill and still fill. So we've already gotten the five druidic pouches we need for that quest step in the In Search of the Meyer Coup to actually use the boat, which is the first part of the transportation, the new navigation system I'm hoping to achieve and hoping to get. Okay, besides the druid pouch needed for the boat transportation, and I believe the next step in the quest, I gotta buy all this steel crap here. I'm gonna go to a few different shops. Then I'm gonna go over to the sawmill, get the steel nails as well as the planks. I think I already have a hammer and all that, but yeah, let's just finish getting the required items.
So we are now at this next step of the quest. It's very early on where I give him all the supplies, I believe, to use this boat. Or maybe it's just the coins and then we use the supplies later for something else. I'm not sure. I just got all of it in case. But hopefully from here on out, I can quick travel with this boat. I'm pretty sure you can for only like 10 coins or a ring of Karos, which I might get eventually as well. And that's going to make, once again, super fast transportation, not only to Canifis, but to the middle of the swamp where this boat takes us. And let's see exactly where that takes us, because I'm not even sure. It might might be close to some clue steps. I think there's some straight west of us whenever we appear outside the other side of this river here. Yeah, okay, this is like pretty much in the middle of the swamp. So I could go west from here, do like I think two different clue steps. It's a really good quick travel from the Shades of Morton teleport I was just next to. The boat was just east of that. And now I'm going to go ahead. It looks like he didn't take my steel equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and try and further do the quest down the line. Hopefully turn this stuff in and then use that underground pass. Okay, it looks like he already did take the druidic pouches he needed and now I'm at the part where I need to repair this bridge and that's what the planks are and the hammer and the nails I'm guessing are for. So uh, good to do this now. Hopefully you don't have to re-repair it later. I'm sure you don't. I've never actually done this quest, I don't believe, on any account, so I'm kind of unfamiliar with how this works and what step exactly I'm going to have to get to to unlock all these different areas, but let's continue once again. Okay, so now we're in the main hideout. We're doing part of the quest here because I could not yet go through the underground tunnel part. It was like locked when you searched the wall. So I'm giving this guy the steel equipment now in hopes that once I give him the equipment, I now can move through the pass. I'm not sure if I need to kill this boss. So I'm gonna click out of that cutscene here and just see if I can continue on once again. All right, let's see now if we can go through the wall since we gave our steel equipment. Doesn't look like it. Once again, gives me the same option. You search the wall, but you don't find anything. I'm really hoping that I can get through it after I kill the boss, the skeleton hell. Hound. I've never fought this boss, so I don't know how I'm going to defeat it. I don't know if I can. Hopefully, I do not need to complete the quest because once again, if I do that, I'm going to be getting attack and strength XP, and I'm not going to be doing that, just FYI. So this is the last step of the quest. I really hope this is going to allow us access to get into cannabis much quicker from the Shades of Morton teleport because there are many clue steps here. And once again, navigation is everything on this account. Daily band scare. Um, got another connection lost randomly while hunting salamanders. I decided to take a break from all this quest grind. I was getting some hunter up. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Everything's okay, I'm not banned today. Maybe tomorrow though, we'll find out. I'm actually coming up on a hunter level here. We are now 75 hunter, huge gains on the hunter grind. I actually enjoy hunter. I don't enjoy most skills, but hunter for some reason, it's just kind of relaxing. I can watch videos while I'm doing it, all that good stuff. I only have to click in five locations, so. We're having fun. I know there's probably better methods out there, but I'm an idiot, so please don't mind me. Another hunter level coming up here. 76 hunter. Woo. Once again, we're taking a little break. Uh, we're avoiding the scary skeleton hellhound at all costs right now for some reason. We're taking our shortcut from Bob all the way to Berthorpe, and I'm going to run through the White Wolf Mountain Pass all the way to Camelot. Even though it's a shortcut, it's still it's still awful. I could pay for a charter ship, but I'm poor and I don't want to make money right now. So I missed the casket opening, but I got purple sweets. I got an Addy full hum, Addy plate legs. That finishes off the entire Addy set for the medium step. I also got some new teleports I can someday use. And then of course, Dragonstone jewelry charges I can never use. This is what my banging clue scroll tab looks like right now after 16 whole medium clues. I'm also throwing in here some stuff I'm getting from eclectic implings that are noted just so I can sell to the shop, which is what I'm doing right now. I have spare Addy equipment even. I didn't have the full helm yet, but I had plate legs and plate bodies to spare. Ooh, 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 look at that, buddy. All right, I've sold that massively impressive inventory almost. I've been hopping around selling a few things per world, but here we go, we're making bank. This is the last world, 169K, not bad at all for just some passive income. It's not the most I've had in the account because I like to run and hide in LMS and make bank through uh, selling some of those rune, rune, rune arrows to the Zaya store. But otherwise, yeah, it's some good passive money and we're gonna spend it all on, you guessed it, sapphires and gold ore, baby. That's what we're gonna be using to make our recoils or at least another couple thousand of them because we always need recoils. We love recoils, buddy. I forgot to mention, of course, we also love games necklaces, even though we're not even using them because we're scared to and we're using some weird fucking Bob the Cat Manip. And lastly, back to LMS because even though I don't need my rune arrows this time, I do need some wilderness crab teleports 
and that's what we're going to be getting through the reward store in order to enchant more recoils with my super sophisticated method which I put in the last video if you want to check it out. Alright, like I said, I've never actually done this quest, but I looked at a Slary Music quest guide. This boss looks relatively easy. I mean, it's like a skeleton puppy. But yeah, I brought some attack potions. I did not bring the LMS boost this time. I did not bring recoils. It doesn't look like it's immune to poison. So I'm just going to poke this skeleton dog a thousand times with uh, regular attack potions and hope I hit it, hope I poison it, hope I kill it. Let's see how easy this actually is. Probably not easy because I always underestimate literally everything. All right, I got this skeleton dog into a safe spot. I've almost eaten like half my inventory of cake. I'm a fatso. This thing is slaughtering me even though I'm 70 defense in some very decent defense bonus. It does not matter. This thing, of course, was underestimated. I also haven't hit this thing once. I've gone through over half my attack potions already. We're just getting slaughtered here. He hit a 7 on me right there. He'll probably hit me. Oh, okay, yeah, there he goes. He hits me a 10. Okay, we're probably going to have to teleport out and use a new strategy. That being the same strategy we use for every other damn thing in this game. Recoils and LMS boost. Alright, I think we've got this in the bag. Come here, little doggy. I just need to poison you one singular time. I just gotta hit you and poison you. This should not be hard. Let's do it. You see how many times I hit this thing? Okay, now it's poisoned. I literally almost got it half HP before I got poison. I was about to say, is the wiki wrong? Is it immune to poison? Nope, we're good though. We're just super unlucky. Let's kill this fucking hound. All right, I think we got this. One more poison tick and he's dead or I can hit because I'm still 13 over one. I still have a lot of boost. I could have just killed this thing, man. What is that on my head? Oh, a, a, a combat task. I forget those are even a thing. That's news to me, buddy. I don't even know what the fuck that means, but sure. Thanks for the combat achievement, whatever that is. This is the moment of truth, though. I got to see if doing this step of the quest, the very last step of the quest, besides talking to the last guy, will be able to allow me to get through the underground shortcut here into Canifus, be able to allow me to get into the Canifus a much quicker way than what I've been doing thus far for Clues steps and and it fucking works are you serious so i don't even need to complete the in search quest i just have to literally kill the dog that's it that's great i don't have to take the attacker strength xp i can go in and out even like that i can go backwards i can go forwards i can go backwards i can go every which damn way i want just never talk to that guy in the corner or else i'll probably ruin my entire account you've seen it here first folks navigation on this account is everything especially when i'm going to be doing like 10,000 fucking clues and those cannabis clues are one hell of a bitch but not as much of a bitch anymore. I can now teleport near the Shades of Morden area, go east to this boat, pay a couple coins, then go north through the swamp, then go through the underground secret passageway all the way to Canifus. So not only did we find this sweet, sweet shortcut into Canifus, we got a lot of progress done in this series in today's episode. We found another shortcut in the Tale of Two Cats quest to get the Birth Orb. We also got a Strength Family, which is going to be our best in slot all the way till Jad. We got Black Gloves, which is going to be our best in slot all the way till Jad. We utilized a lot of our rings of recoil and quests that otherwise should not be possible, such as Eccleton's Little Helper and the Feud Quest, and we got some clues done. All of it's been a great journey thus far, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of A Defense Saga. If you want to get notified when the next episode's coming out, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like the video as well if you did, and I'll see you next on the 30th.